Hello, Kusha, and welcome to Oran Football Special, the program that all the way to discuss, dissect, and digest with you. You they talk about when it comes to everything football and members in our Oran Salon, the little telecom service provider in the country, the company we care about what matter to you, they ensure that OFS brings to you live football issues, discussion of the pitch and of the pitch, and of course, like always, so they're not to any exception as they are again, you know, the best of brains of football will bring to you the latest what happen in football, both locally and internationally. And members say, I mean, a priority solution they behind this one, TBT one, you know, supported by Orange, the lead telecom service provider in the country. Keep watching, we'll go for a quick break, but before that, I want to remind you of the fact that you confidently get a nice. Why you say no one forgets a nice with the Orange student pack? You get the opportunity as a student, just take the particulars to any of the Orange booths in around town and ensure that you get registered for that particular platform there and continue for enjoy unlimited data offered to you by Orange. Keep watching. <laughs> And YouTube game in just day, dope no more with Spark. You get 2.5 gigabytes for 15,000 euros monthly, and we they greet you with 1.2 gigabytes for free as you join. So, I will not that Spark get some nice orange. Welcome back to the show. You're watching Oran Football Special with me, Engineer Mohamed Ben Simba. And of course, coming up in the show, we'll tell you exactly how Orange Football Special long ensure that they bring to your life pictures who say Liverpool long end in 30 years wait for the English Premier League title as Chelsea give them on a silver platter after they defeat Manchester City 2-1 inside London, making it the second defeat in a succession for Manchester City after what they've been lost to Jose Mourinho's. Tottenham and of course Liverpool and Tati would finally come to an end. Also on the locals in will tell you exactly what's going to happen inside the Bull Rangers Clubhouse construction. What's I will bring to your life pictures. And most importantly, we'll get the brains of football for each other. We'll discuss what exactly we need for do as far as raising the country's game, you know, to the level we've been in before and make them better. Because for sure, you know, say I live football don't they on the fall for far too long now, but for a considerable years. So one for ensure that will bring to you, you know, discussions related to what it don't go wrong and the things that we need for do for ensure that we we'll take than the for I mean for join me for discussions I get with me, you know, the Leon Stars coach and of course the holders of the current Sierra Leone Premier League, the champion, you know, John Kista. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you again. Thank you. Yeah, of course, I get the former coach of Diamond Stars and, of course, the assistant coach for, uh, how do I call it, uh, under 20 shooting stars. Yes, yeah. yes, we quite recently bring to a glue side and reach the semi finals of the Waffle under 20 tournament in Guinea. Francis Zappa, or Francis overlapping Zappa. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very it's much. It's a pleasure. So How about starting with Liverpool, you know, who side and 30 years wait for the English Premier League? I mean, for make, I mean, having won 18 league titles, then got to wait for 30 years or make a 19th. And in the process, you know, a lot of things that don't happen. Chelsea don't can win five in that process. If Manchester, if Manchester United don't come overtake them, City don't can win the couples. For sure, then they go mean to Liverpool fans and the the what the the wait really what waiting for for 30 years. English Premier League titles finally, yeah, John Kista. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, I think um, it's, um, it's a massive, massive big congratulations to Liverpool. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think, you know, after, after going through a difficult, difficult 30 years, you know, you know, just imagine when they went through the glory years, you know, when they dominated English football, you know, and had to go through transition, even though the transition just took a bit longer. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, they've, they've, they've actually come back and, and deservedly, you know, won the a title you know I know there's a there's a lot of things people there's a lot of myth around oh it's 30, 30 years oh it's, it's, it's corona co you know you've got all those <laughs> those things you know yes. all those banter and stuff coming but I think they deserve it eh? they've done very very well yeah. I think um, they, 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 they've, they've been very very good in what they've done but don't forget you know bringing this title is, 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 is a five years work plan yeah. and that's that's what is very very interesting around 
when you achieve success, you know. Um, it's, been, it's been a project. And to see the project come off after five years, within five years, or five years as, as it came in when you said, we've grown in the Premier League in five years, I think is absolutely brilliant. Because they've gone through that transition and the patience as well. Yeah. And now it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a joy. Yeah. You know one coach who don't go through a whole season on beating, which means it's really difficult for maintain such a form, uh, you know, hunger for keep among the boys. You know, so how difficult it is for get this going, knowing that last year they only lose one game and missed out narrowly to Man City and they came out, you know, gun blazing, you know, hunting down teams like never before and eventually landing the Premier League title. Benson, it's the fact that, you know, what what what's happened over the years is Liverpool have not done a lot of changes at all, and that's very, very important. And what they've done in the five years is they've identified players, and you know, they've brought those players in. And what they've had, they've had a good, 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 a good group of, of players, very consistent, very hardworking. And what he's, what he's given them over the years is the belief, you know, having just missed out and went into, into the Champions League and won that, that gave them the belief that they can win the Premier League. It was only a matter of time. And I think, to be honest, what he's, what he's given them. The, the, the more belief is, is how they started the season. You know, they've, they've started on a very good, strong footing. And because there's belief and there's, there's, there's a good group, there's, there's good team spirit, you know, the temperament of the players, the work rate of the players, which has been absolutely, absolutely brilliant. I think that's just give them the edge of uh, going into games and, and winning games. And, you know, they've gone into games thinking we're going to win it. You know, whatever happens, yeah, we're going to win it. Regardless of what happens, we're going to win it. You know, we're going to get something out of games. And you know, when you, when you have that, that mentality amongst players, and when you know, uh, another thing that we've got to be very, we've got to give, give them credit for is they've not had injuries, you know, to, to key players. You know, that's, that's very important as well. Just imagine if Seller had gone injured, yeah. Mane has gone injured, yeah. Firmino has gone injured, what would have happened? But you know, they've, they've had the breaks, they've had a the, uh, lock. And, and they've kept those players yeah, and I, they've performed. Yeah, I, I would take them from this point and turn over to Zappa when you mention injuries particularly and this being a five years project. This project when it begins will get a lot of concerns about fitness of players, injury here and there. In fact, people even be, uh, begin for question, you know, a club's process of training, you know, the heavy metal jacket football or whatever. You, but eventually they don't pay off the players, they don't get to the pace where he thinks they want for get them and they eventually, you know, almost injury free, you know, as far as consistency is concerned on the side of the, I mean, the nucleus of the team, you always see them. Achieving that is by no means an easy feat, Zappa. Yeah, obviously. First of all, I want to say congratulations to, to Liverpool, you know, uh, waiting for 30 years, you know, it's not a day journey, you know, and uh, you know, they, they won and the And the producer it, for this show was one year old. When yeah, the last yeah year. so you see... I can't say how I, old I was. In this. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously. And uh, when they won the 18th title, you know, they wanted to... And then the Manchester dominance came in. You know, Manchester dominated the, 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 the English league. Manchester won in the 20th times, you know. And then there was a lot of pressure on, on them, you know, because yeah, that's so. uh, a rivalry is on... Uh, uh, is right between them, you know. And make it and very difficult for them. It was very, very difficult, and the competition was high, uh, high up there, you know. And uh, they started changing from one manager to another. Brendan Rogers almost got it for them, and if now they had to go for Klopp. Klopp came in; he had a five years project, and today it has paid off, you know. I just want to say congratulations to them. Okay, five years project and coming close in multiple times. I think the first came close after we didn't win them in, in I think 1990 with, uh, uh, how do I call it, Kenny Daglish before the Saka and then um, uh, Girard Goule came close in yeah. 2000, 2001, yeah. you know, finishing behind Manchester uh, United and then uh, Brenda Rogers. No, before Brenda Rogers, there was uh, this Spanish coach, yeah. you know, yeah. in 2000, Rafa, Rafa. Yeah, Rafa Benitez, 2008, 2009 season. Mm -hmm. And then Brenda Rogers, 2013, 2014. And then last season, you know, Klopp himself came very close. Yeah. And now this season. So clearly, there are a whole lot of process where the team don't show, where the patients, where the fans they don't show, you know, and it's, it's what's waiting for, for sure. Um, you mentioned the fans, you know, the fans are very, very, very incredible, you know. They've been behind their team from the onset. And uh, as you rightly said, it's like it, it's a process. They were building something. They were trying to get this thing right. And uh, today, it has paid off, you know. And uh, 
one thing I would say is like Klopp, Klopp has got the, the uh, has seen that the players are in the right frame of mind. They are fit, as uh, uh, John rightly said. They are injury free. They are playing with no injury, and uh, and uh, I think that's the most important thing. You know, when you are playing, your key players are not injured, and they are performing week in week out. The players are giving everything. The managers. They, they, they are giving everything for the manager and for the club as a whole. I think if any coach is happen to have a, a such, such a side, such a side really you know, happy. yeah, he yeah. should be I very, very agree, happy. I cannot agree with you more. So, you know, at such a point, once we come to mind or once we play in the minds of Liverpool supporters, particularly, what's next now that they don't win the league and still have about seven more matches to go? Then get a player like Mohamed Salah would definitely want to win the Golden Boot. I think he's on 17 goals, you know. So behind Vadi, you know, uh, Aubameyang, what thing will be played the, the coach in mind? Will he, be, will he want to push, you know, the team to the limits, breaking the 100 points barrier set by Manchester City, or just maintaining team and see that you know they finish the season on the high? I, I think uh, Benson, he's going to be very, very professional. You know, it's not about reaching um, winning the league. It's about getting to the end of it. You know, and see what you get, see what is it achieved, and how you achieve that. You know, you're not going to say to your players, oh, we, we won the league, so now we don't care. No, it's about winning every... It's habit. Football is about habit. It's about getting into good habits. And managers and coaches, we, we're always asking our players, good habits, good habits, good habits. Because that's what we want players to get into. You know, we're not going to be sitting back and say, no, we, we, we've won it and that's it. No, I think he's going to be looking at, we want to get as many points as we want. You know, and, 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 and that's how you set yourself standards and those are the standards he's going to follow. The players themselves will want to set themselves standards because you're thinking about making history. You know, you're thinking about, you know, again, going back to my, my time in the Lions, the players have gone unbeaten. That's history in itself. So now they're thinking, we, 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 we was a generation of players that made that history. Now we want to see the next generation of players that are coming into Lions to make that. So I think that's what they'll be, they'll be going for. They, they want to finish on a very, very high. And I, I can see them doing that because, you know, they've got the, the onus is on them. They've got the, what is it called? They've got the belief going into every game. And, and it's like teams are just, can't deal with them at the minute. I think their, their, their level of consistency, you know, the, 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 the big players, you know, their, their conditioning, I think, what has been very good for Liverpool, their condition has been absolutely amazing. And that's what's got them where they are. And they're, they're not going to be taking their, their, their foot off the pedal. I think they're just going to keep gassing, gassing and get to the end of it. Yeah. Not wanting to take your foot off the pedal, but also take into consideration that they're young players that go for blood into the team. How how this mechanism get for work out for the coach in relation to the balance of the team? Because for sure, even in the last match, we see exactly what happened bringing through, you know, uh, young players for see that you know then can then set and show what they get for you. Yes, I agree that even those young players coming in and go and prove a point wanting to prove to the manager that you've got players to look at instead of going to the market we are here we want to prove something to you uh, how do they play out you know it's um it's a kind of a catch-22 situation Benson, when it comes to football and when he, this is where management comes into it and this is where again as coaches we, we we look at things from a different perspective you know um honestly what i what i think from a professional side of it and, a, and an ex-pro as an older player i want to play every game you know we've got the young players we want to bring them through because we want to see how they're going to start work, how they're going to start developing. No, I want to finish the season. You know, these young players have to be patient. You know, there's going to be a time when they'll come in. We'll go into games where we start games, we win 4 0, 5 0, they'll start bringing one or two in. Listen, the manager is not going to come in and start throwing all six, seven young players in and say, go. Now, he's not going to do that because what's going to happen? They start losing one game, they start losing a game, and back you go back to the bad habits. You know what I mean? And you're not going to want to do that. The players, the older players, they're all professionals who want to play. Eh? The older pros want to play. They want to finish the season and say, yes, we we'll finished it. Again, it's about how many games you played in that season, you know? But I think he will start introducing these younger players, you know? He'll go into games and he'll bring one or two in at a time, one or two in at a time. But I don't think he's going to do wholesale yeah. because I don't think that's professional. Because whatever happens, you're going into matches. Whatever club you're coming against now, there's got to be that respect. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's not because I've won the league, I'm going to go into Man City now, I'm going to bring all kids. I think that would be disrespectful to Man City themselves. That would be dis disrespectful to the supporters as well. They want to see the best. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for sure the coach is aware of that. And of course, after the, the after all them the crown champions, we, Chelsea, don't beat Manchester City. Pep Guardiola, sorry, not Pep Guardiola. Uh, Jordan Klopp, they therefore say, in belief, say, 
next season he get for me tough. Like me expect to establish an But one confidence we get now that his players are young and then get hunger in them, they want to win more. And he believes say, that determination they don't get for the past three years will continue into next season and ensure that they of course go out there and cause that work. Now listen, we'll get for this particular segment of the show. We'll go for a quick break and we'll come back. We'll tell you exactly what will happen at the local game starting with a visit to ball. Keep watching. Orange money don't put yagba pa me. The only thing I get for do for make bill payments na for dial hash one four four hash. Select three for make payments. Select one for etza. Enter almost money I want buy in Leons. Enter me eleven digit etza meter number. Enter me password for confirm and press send. You go receive a confirmation message na your phone. You see one yagba you no get. Orange money me phone me couple. Orange. Welcome back to the show. It's been exciting in here in our makeshift studio. Well, a lot of people that don't say the studio is very much fantastic, but let me tell you, it's a makeshift studio we are using. But that now we stand in orange and show that will bring to you, you know, pictures of what's going to happen around the world of sports and football in particular. And of course, at local level, you know, the orange football special be ensure that, you know, they get stories from both sides. Bow Rangers they go on with the clubhouse construction. Where on completion will be the first in the history of Sierra Leone football, constructed by a football team, not bought by a football team, I must say. Probably in history, other clubs, they don't go for buy, you know, clubhouses or what have you. And this clubhouse, they take, sorry, get 18 rooms, all self-contained, a hall, a gym, and of course, you know, dining hall as well, including a secretariat for the Bow Rangers Football Club. Let's watch this insert. Bow Rangers Football Club is the only surviving football club from the southern region in the Sierra Leone Premier League. Since the formation of the club in 1954, the club has recently seen massive transformation beginning from the 2018-2019 league season to the current 2019-2020 season, albeit suspended due to COVID-19. This transformation has seen top football talents from across the country assembled to play for Bow Rangers, and for the first time in the history of the Southern Region Giants, they are leading the Premier League table and may be crowned champions if no football is kicked again in the top flight football. Save cancellation by the FA, a situation that will see no representation if in CAF Champions League or CAF Confederation Cup. All of this has been made possible courtesy of the astute leadership of the club's chairman, Babadi Kamara, his executive, and the fans of Bow Rangers. The transformation has not only been limited on the pitch, as sometimes this year, the management of the club launched the construction of Bow Rangers Clubhouse, a project which on completion will put Bow Rangers in the position of envy as the only club in the history of Sierra Leone club football with a clubhouse. Babadi Kamara is the executive chairman of Bow Rangers Football Club. He explains more to Oran Football Special this about world the project. Or Sierra Leone, to be specific, over the years, we don't to see people in the build institution them, run them. And once they know the decision, they bound for fail. And me own management, I believe, say, institution can be strong for itself. That even when you left, people don't notice say you don't left. So, what you will do right now, now for ensure say Bo Rangers they did forever and ever. I mean, we get to the call in industrial environment, continuous process improvement. Bo Rangers will only continue to be improved after each project will complete. We must to find that thing we very important. We the club will need, we the tongue will need, we football as a whole will need. We will continue for going back. One of the things in the like we say this now, we ask this now, we get a fee. We are in, if possible, let we um, stay the outside to play games there. God give you a long life and we body and provision. Abdul say that no way we for do also. Abdul Karim Bangura, the team manager of Bow Rangers Football Club, outlines the club's objectives on the clubhouse initiative. We 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 feel proud. This to start with this is an initiative of the chairman, Mr. Baba de Kamara, na a visionary leader and the man we in anything we did do, he want for see results, he want for see tangibles and the things he really own. 
the overall beneficiary yes a very good project where we're proud of where we believe say go elevate football a bow district in the southern region as well but the overall beneficiary of this project na Sierra Leone, the football in family na Sierra Leone. we go see i'm saying a bow rangers initiative and a bow rangers on start time but the overall beneficiary at the end of the day is going to be Sierra Leone because when once Bow Rangers on studies, we will go for see another clubs in the country. Yeah. We will continue for do the same thing. And as long as every other club do the same thing, then we will see football will rise beyond what we all expect. Yeah, what we, we think we want to achieve is, first of all, we want to get a foundation. or We want to get a strong brand presence of Bow Rangers. The club don't they exist, we don't they get offices all over the place but we won't forget the structure we do this for let everybody know say bow rangers is here to stay bow rangers has been in existence for such a long time but we don't start slow but this is not a turning point in the history the team captain of bow rangers football club mori aliu expresses his delights on the ongoing project um, on daily basis at the young for that and you know like yesterday i've gone through the phone I mean, look at the good pictures they will be they take, the moment they will be the train get fun. I miss them a lot because for quite a long time, we don't get that opportunity. Even at the moment, they will be the jamot, they will be done. But I miss them a lot. So, every day thinking that sooner or later, we will move into a clubhouse where we all go there. But really, um, undertake a job who all we don't see yes, we believe in them. It always keep me happy and that I just want it happen the next day because I believe say if it ever take one month, I say I say long, I want to do with police then that will be together again and get the opportunity to begin playing. Wow, beautiful insights indeed. I mean, this is what we are talking about. When you bring competition in the game, new phases in the game, a lot of things that happen. One sleeping giant is up now, Bow Rangers. And of course, it's a fantastic edifice, you know, where they own as far as construction is concerned. You know, what does this mean to, you know, football generally in this country? I think it's about standards. I think it's, uh, it's very, very, very good for for Bo Rangers and Babadi. I think he's, he's lifted the, the standards up a little bit um, in, in, in developing the clubhouse. You know, um, I think it will, it will be the start of a, of a good, good development project in Bo, in the southern region. When eventually they end back on the, on the, on the process of the, of the, of the, of, the, of the clubhouse itself. You know, I was asking a question saying, what is that clubhouse? So like you just mentioned, it's 18 rooms and a gym, and what is it for? Is it for Bow Rangers or is this going to be an academy clubhouse? So this is the question I wanted to know. In the short term, I think it's going to be to, to, to help Bow Rangers out in regards to the players, which I think, again, if it's about accommodate, accommodating players, Bow Rangers, I have my opinion around that. If it's to do with um, a youth development academy project, I think it will be absolutely brilliant. For me, I think that's the way forward. I think that's the start of Salon Football's transition. If we can all have that in a different, different situation around clubs, then it gives us a, a lot more going forward in terms of our development. Okay, if we can have that within our transition as far as we're concerned, we'll go a lot forward going forward. In the words of John Kista, taking the cue from what you say clearly, Babadi been mentioned, say, this clubhouse is meant towards developing the game. You know, a lot of players are out there, probably from the west, the south, the, the, the east, far away from ball. So if they get an opportunity for, blow, for play for ball, if ball just going for it, they will be assured that the first thing when it comes to a player's stability when accommodation is being settled. So clearly, it's a good picture going forward as far as, you know, that structure is concerned, Zappa. Yeah, rightly, a good picture, I think. As he rightly said, they are trying to set the standard straight, you know, and um, it's a very, very, very good um, initiative. And I think that will send a signal to the rest of the teams, you know, because if um, the teams, all the teams in Sierra Leone, all the Premier League teams in Sierra Leone, uh, 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 consider to have a structure like that to try to keep players together, and uh, then you start seeing. Um, that kind of development, but as you rightly said, if 
uh, because Sierra Leone, we really need to go back to the grassroots and try to develop players from grassroots for the future, you know. And, um, but for now, I believe everything he's doing now is for Bull Rangers. And maybe with time, we will try to see whether it will be converted for, uh, uh, for to, some other reasons. to an academy or something else. Yeah. But Bull Rangers, for sure, having a football academy will not be a bad thing at all because that is what we've always looking forward to. You know, if you go 30 years back down the line or 31 years before our producer was born, you know, get an opportunity for see that when teams then come out to play the Easter Lions, you know, the Fisheries, you know, they get the junior side they what they play for us, like you mentioned in the last mm. episode of the show, you know, but now that one day, now 18 of the person, no, they seen that they at all. And now, so we'll take crossover to the topic of discussion for this specific program for do it. What has gone wrong as far as Sierra Leone football is concerned? And what are the things that we need to do for ensure that we bring the game back? Well, not, not really past the level we've been but to the level we've been particularly going towards 1994 and 1992, we'll qualified for two consecutive Nations Cup then, and probably better that level. But first, we'll get to go to that level they first, where others will be the competitive before they don't go far way beyond that level. But let's get back to that level first. So, Zappa, how do we go about this as a country? How really, in general, generally, how do you go about this? Um, thank you very much. You see, um, I think we got it right in those years because there were immediate replacement for players who were going. Okay. You know? What you mean, say, established development process? Yes. Themselves. Yes, and um, sure we players. had a very competitive league. You know, you can, you can see. Before, when they were inviting players, maybe they would just invite five or six players and blend them with the players playing the, the, home, league. the home league because we are having a very competitive league. Players, we are fit, we are playing week in, week out, you know, everything. So that immediate replacement was there, you know. But I believe that's why we got it right. You know, but the, uh, 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 over the years, that has been lacking, you know. That has been lacking. That's why we need to go back to the drawing board go back to the grassroots because I think that's what uh, most of our, 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 our neighboring countries have done, countries that are enjoying their football today. If you look at the Senegal, the Egypt, all those countries, they went back to the grassroots, they forgot about um, results. If the results come, okay, it's fine with them. But if the, if, if the result is not there, yes, they're on development process, you know. And then it worked for them. Today, look at the football they are playing. Look at what they are playing. Look at the players they are producing out there. Mm -hmm. And where know? they are. So and where they are. Where you see? And, uh, but one thing I would say in Sierra Leone, we are going for this immediate winning. Immediate winning. We want to win at all costs. We don't even want to know whether we prepared well. We just want to win. And it is, that has been causing us a serious problem. Yeah, that has been causing a serious problem. Jonas, I will take bring into this discussion. You know, taking out from the Liverpool point of view, five years project. So clearly, Klopp was hired, and then he came out boldly and said to the board and the fans that you know, get for the patience. This this is a project we're not going to come to fruition in the next one year or two years. It's a five years project. Absolutely. But in the process, we will ensure that we improve every year. We really mean say. It's about establishing the right and appropriate structures and ensure that you go by them, you know, to the latter, and then you go for produce results. And all of these take real consistency. And clearly at the moment, that is lacking. Where do we start from? Um, just, just going back to what Zappa said, I think, again, that's... Um, I, I, I can remember, you know, I, I, I went to school during the 80s. You know, I was here. Uh, I was in both school and my dad coached my uncle coached as well he was coaching eastern lions my dad and the biggest problem we've had in syrian football is transition in every single aspect of the game we have in a transition and um, when you go back to the 80s where everybody thought syrian football was at the highest peak yes it was because there was a generation of players they were based at home very, very strong. Mm -hmm. There was never the aspect of going overseas to play football. Yes. So and, everybody and, was and, at home. And that system then influenced a lot of foreign players who also can play. Which improved our game as exactly. well. So we had a very strong league. 
a lot of players at the time very young but if there was about 30 odd 40 players called into the national team the senior national team there's about 60 odd that could come back into the senior national team that tells you the quality of players that are there at the time, at the time. so that in itself is about transition in terms of players going into the national team and you still got a whole bunch of players that could come in and fit into the international team as well again that's why the level of competition the level of club football in Australia was at the top level now during those areas during those areas as well Bawo, we had coaches we had Gobio we had Mane Peters we had Mula we had what's the name the Guinean guy there was over Blackpool Kolev. Kolev yeah. There was a good group of coaches at the time that worked with these players, which developed our game. Okay? From the 80s, we went into the 90s. What happens in the 90s? Results the change. whole perception of football changed. Okay? How did it change? From a coaching point of view, a lot of these coaches went. From 1980s, going into the 90s to the 2000s, we had a group of coaches which was Garincha, Obemezika, Ofi, and Christian Cole. Okay? That was a group of coaches. Every other one, every other coach is left. Cole went, passed away, the others are left. So we had those group of coaches. There was never a transition in the coaching situation in Sierra Leone at the time. There was never. It was only these four coaches. Today, it will be OB, tomorrow it will be this. They were the four coaches that went through the national team in Sierra Leone. And then what happened? We lost a group of players from the 80s because of age and everything else. They all went overseas. For they went, John Dubia went, Tibati went, Abduko went. So we lost that. They went overseas, not to play. They went overseas to start another life. Another life. So now, we are the generation of the 90s players come through. In those generations, what happened? Players started coming through, but then the international football situation came in. Everyone wants to go out. So now players are coming in, they want to go overseas. Players are coming in, they want to go overseas. Whichever way they can go overseas, they'll go overseas. Whether it was to go and play or not to play, they wanted to go away. Because again, you've got to look at the situation in the country in terms of the poverty. Yeah. So players want to go and better themselves. So the dynamics changed. So we started losing players. There were better players that could have stayed there and developed and helped, but no, they wanted to go away. Again, the transition from the coaching was never right. Because when Ofi, Obi and them were coaching, what coaches came through in terms of transition that could take the lead going back into the future? We didn't have that. All we had now was the late Diamontos, Diamontos came through, mm -hmm. late Daifan came through. We lost those. Apart from those generational coaches that have gone out, what came through? We have Shotabu Sanko, Ajina, you have Lamin Bangura, and who else? Musa. Musa. That's the generation of coaches that came through. Can you imagine? Out of all those players that played in the 80s, apart from the office and them, they've gone and coming into the 90s. How many coaches have you got come through out of that generation? Only five. How do we expect development to go through in terms of the football in the country? It's not going to work, Bawo. Out of seven million. Now, go back to that transition from those coaches. You have Lamin, you have Ajina, you have them and all these ones. They're going through. It brings us to our generation of coaches now. Myself, Zappa, this generation is the 90s generation of coaches that are coming through. How many of us? Not a lot. There's about 28 that have got a license. There is more out there. In that 28 that's got a license, how many coaches are really, really getting to the top of the game that could start this development process in terms of bringing the players through to a level that is accepted to start competing for Sierra Leone? We don't have that. So now we're going to, you know that you're one person that's been very, very uh, pro about that the capacitating of coaches in this country by the FA. So now we're looking at that as well. I said to the coaches, now you've got myself, you've got Zappa, you've got Mohamed, you've got that. How many of us? 20. How do we expect 20 coaches to develop Sri Lankan football when there is a bigger picture around development, not just the Premier League? We have to go back to the youth development programs. And to go back there for us to get that development process right, the experienced coaches have to go down there to get it right for us to go up there. Yeah. Do we have the experienced coaches? No. We are the coaches that are coming through. So what happens down there? How does the development process go down there? So you see when I say there's been a lot of gap around transition. Now when you talk about our transition, because if we don't get the coaches right, we don't get the coaches coming in, but I don't care what happens. We're never going to get players. Because the players have to be developed. Who is going to develop those players? And, and I, I really think Sedana is a very huge problem as far as it is. this aspect of football is concerned. Because you get situations we are in 
these players play on their own, probably from age six, seven, yes. until they are 15 or thereabouts, yes. mm -hmm. before they come across the first good coach in their life. Absolutely. You understand? So already the boss, you don't get what you call informative years. One of the most important aspects of the it player's is. life. It is. You know, it gone is. without the technical person really guiding his game. So clearly, this is a big problem. And also, another factor for considering the fact that, you know, back in the days, you have a lot of leagues around, you know, mini leagues. And then many leagues there get categorization of players within the play. But now, that's, that's, that's under the dustbin because at the end of the day, you know, whether on a two aside league, a three aside, a six aside, you have all players in the country involved in playing this league from top to bottom. But well, we can start pointing fingers, but we've got to look at ourselves as a whole nation and really sit down and look at it and see where it's gone wrong. We can say, is his fault? Is his fault? But how is it their fault? It's everyone's fault. Because like you said, like you mentioned, we had leagues that were categorized, okay? Players are going from there to there to there to there. But it became, there came a situation where everything changed because there was nothing else going on. The Ebola came in, we had a period. And for me, I can only say the, the difficult, difficult time Sri Lankan football is going through now is because of Ebola. Four years, Ebola came in. I think it's, it finished everything. Because you know what? There was nothing else to do. It was only the, the inter-area leagues. And that's where everything has gone wrong. Because you know when people are talking about development, the inter-area league was a, was, a, was a, what is it I could say? Was, a, was an end to a means. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Like, thank you very much. Exactly. It wasn't. It was an end to a means. You know, just to keep things going. And then that came in. And what happened? All players went there. It wasn't about coaching a, 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 a community league. Yeah. It was about players, come, 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 put them in, go and play. That was it. But then you're bringing players into that that have grown older and older and older and haven't gone through proper development process. Mm -hmm. And these are the same players that you want to go into the senior national teams, into categories. How is that going to work if no, they haven't so gone through the... So, exactly. So if, if we for look forward to really getting started, Zappa, you know, in all of this, you know, the FA and the government of Sierra Leone through the ministry also get more than a moral responsibility for ensure that then collaboration and really corroboration is a top notch for getting right. For example, we cannot develop the game around if we don't get good pitches. As it is in the country, we have about two good pitches. One in McKinney. Yes, you want to I, I just want to say something again. You know, you know, about I was, I, I was sorry I, I came into this. You know, a lot of people are sitting here, a lot of people have got opinions about what they think should, for, for, should, uh, football should be, not what it is. Okay? Everyone, grassroots, grassroots, grassroots. Everyone, we have to go to, back to the grassroots. We have to go back to the grassroots. Is it viable for Syria to go to grassroots football? It's not viable. You've just mentioned that. It's not viable. Why is it not viable? When we talk about grassroots, it's a long term development project yeah. from 6 to 11 to 12. Okay? Go back straight to what you said. Do we have the facilities to do that development? In terms of grassroots, you're talking about start developing six, seven year olds. How do you go and start developing six, seven year olds in a parade field? Come on, let's be, let's be, let's be reasonable about it. Exactly. <laughs> so, this is where I think, in terms of Australian football, let's start thinking about the environment we are, what is viable, and what is going to work for us. At this moment in time, what is viable for us? What is going to work for us? I think we just need to play, pay premium on youth development projects, which is 15s, 16s, 17s. And we start the development process there, and that's where we start Syrian football. Yeah, and this team will not go without the facilities we just mentioned. Like I mentioned, the whole country will only go to pitches, in Kono and in Makini. The national stadium is a no-go zone. Don't call it a good pitch. I will mm. not accept it today, tomorrow, any other day. The one at Bow, no-go zone. So clearly, the efforts of government and that of the FA really get for come to region if one for six so I agree. I'll give you an example. When Germany failed in the 2000 World Cup or 2002 World Cup, you know, where we all say they, they went back to the dream board, whether not, you know, auto card they use or whatever this, I don't know. But what they did was that they go back and develop youth centers. And those centers had experienced coaches where players would not get the opportunity for going to academy systems, they go there and con get contact hours with players. You understand? If a 60 year old go there, you know, after 10 years, you know, three hours average per day, you are talking of a 16 year old player, complete professional, they strike the ball at any angle. Mm -hmm. 
The only difference that that's what I get with mental toughness and other people break through. And today it's a different ball game. Jamming gets, I mean, some of the brightest talents in, as far as world football is concerned. Multiple then they then they then they, are, then they emerge every other day, you understand? So so we mean say we will achieve such, but really we not don't pay much attention to them. If you go back to the school system before, if you go thirty years back, you not go come across an established school, not get play facility. So they will have more than one thousand and one schools, we not get small part of self for play. So that is also a problem. Also, when it comes to investment into the structures of the game, it's a huge problem because you have schools where they collect money for sports, but you don't really see, you know, the sign of sports and the school. I mentioned Fubri College, for example. Fubri College, when I was there some seven to ten years ago, I would pay eighteen thousand euros. Every other student will pay eighteen thousand euros for sports fee. I doubt if they get tennis ball. So what thing they do with their money there? I will not blame them. I will blame the Supervisor Ministry of, Ministry of Education, for example. So now I said government also gets a pivotal role. Because when I always say I come up from the school system, today, if one for establish another 17 team, I, I go down, I go, I, it go difficult for a lot of players from schools. Yeah. So right how do you go about it? As you rightly mm -hmm. said, you know, um, it is very difficult because as they say, you cannot give an old dog a new name. Most of these players started playing by themselves. Mm. Most of us started playing by ourselves because maybe some of us um, were a bit brilliant. You know, when we came to play, we started playing under coaches. We we cooked, we catch up you know, we catch it up, and then. But it is very, very, very difficult because if you are a coach now, players are coming. They've done everything by themselves. They have their own way of thinking. They have their own mentality. To change that immediately, it is very, very difficult. And you have to have, you, ha you need to have the right environment, as John said. If that environment is not there, if that facility is not there, it will be very, very difficult. You see, uh, I always said, um, every competition, the calendar is always out there. The calendar is always out for every competition in the world. Now, there are some countries, they know that in two years, they will be playing an under-20 competition. They've started preparing now. The problems, because one, we don't have the good environment, we don't have the facilities. Maybe that's why that preparation has not been coming before going to those tournaments. You know, we don't have the environment, we don't have the facilities. And it is very, very, very difficult, as John rightly said. It is very, 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 very difficult. So if we know what's best for us now, we start dealing with the 15th, the 16th, the 17th. Because those are grown-ups now. Those are grown-ups. They know even if you, uh, 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 we, we want to prepare, it, prepare them at the facilities we have, the parade, they, they know what is good and what is bad. You can prepare those players, those ages, those categories. I think we can prepare them now for the future. Okay. Because those those players they know uh, the good from the bad you know even if we don't have the right facilities we can manage them because of their age now okay so you know the i can see my middle ground issue you know it's really difficult for really pinpoint exactly as to say the problem they you know but clearly instability like you mentioned the issue of ebola and what have you now COVID 19 now a uh, critical issue also We've had instability in the game for far too long from the political point of view, you know, to developing the game. Because when you have a house divided, you have ones, you have the one, you get the one then who they pray for success, you get the one who they pray for they fail. Because there's this mentality that, ah, if this one succeeds, ah, you go get a good name. So we'll not agree. You understand? Yeah. And there's this thought also that they were, they're not gonna give me this opportunity for doing this job. So all of this with Kruman they say not gonna bomb good picking. So where do we draw the line when it comes to fighting for this instability, John? You know, sometimes I can say it, 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 it's, it's so difficult for talking about the issues here because, again, regardless of what you want for say, how truthful you say, you have people who always blame you. That look, that man, they talk this because of this. I mean, but that's the situation for you, guys. You know, um, I think I think it's come to a time by when we've got to think Sierra Leone and we've got to think football development. Mm -hmm. For me, that's where I draw the line. You know, I think 
Um, yeah, we, we, everyone has got their opinions about their feelings and their wishes about which way they think it should go. Okay. But that's them. But I don't think that should affect the football development process. I don't think that should affect Sierra Leone's development in terms of the football, in terms of growth. I don't think it should. Well, unfortunately, sometimes these things, you know, rightly so or wrongly so, they do happen. But I think we, we, we've got to go, we've got to think forward. I am one of these people, but sometimes we think, well, what's going wrong, what's going wrong? No, let's look forward. Let's start thinking forward and see, okay, now this hasn't been done. Let's start here with a very small scale and see how, can, how that can progress, how that can develop. For me, that's how I, I, I think it should be. It's like you, you, you go back, I, you mentioned about the school league, and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, what is the purpose of the school league? Well, what is the purpose of the league, for school league? Is it a uh, player ID? Is it to identify players? If is what is it? Yes, you can do the school league, but there is um, what is the purpose of the school league? Is it because we think to say when the school league comes in, the players that are going to be involved in the school league are younger and their ages are correct? Is that why we go into the school league? I, I don't understand that. The, again. The, 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 the coaches that are doing the schools, are they qualified coaches? Are they really developing the school kids to be to the level that is expected? But they are not. And so, clearly, so these this are, is, these these are, are all the problems. You know, so, so, so before, before yeah. now, let me just come in, John, sorry for that. Before now, you, you get PE masters in schools where they may not be certified coaches in football, volleyball, or basketball, but they are very knowledgeable in the game. Yes. Today, unfortunately, I have to say this. It's, it's not the same story. No, of course. You have isn't. people coming from the PE system. They don't know nothing about the game. But what? You understand? Having knowledge so, 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 and passing the knowledge. Yes, exactly. And two different things. It's two different so things. So when it comes to when it comes to the school league system, let me can say governments and the FA really need for sit down and strategize and ask these questions and provide answers to them. How how do we really go about? You know, reviving sports. In I'm saying this because I don't know when we'll forget academy systems in this country. You well, understand? But, but this school system, you understand, they encourage players from maybe GSS one, GSS two, up to SSS one. When they see the seniors they play for the schools, it will inspire them. I have to train more so that next season I go for make the school team. And in the process, I mean, I go for play for the school team. I'm sure now so now so, playing at the school. So system. now the process here about the suspension. After the school team, where do they go? Again, we, we, can, we can provide See? an answer to that. I could After say, the school can, team, where do they let go? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. We can, there's a possibility of establishing development centers already. Yes, already. Uh, government of Sierra Leone get coaches who in the pay. Yeah. Would they on government payroll? Oh, a lot of people don't know this. But yes, government of Sierra Leone get coaches who in the pay every month in this country. And these coaches... They not get CRSF as in what they do on daily basis. The employees of the Ministry of Sports or Sport Council or now NSA, you ah. understand? What do they really do? What programs do they have? So, we are talking of you know a whole lot of you know licensed B coaches, licensed C don't come in. These are people where governments and the FA will collaborate and make use of. You understand? And probably develop centers, regional centers. You know. Like you are talking of the 16s, the 16s, the 17s, the 15s, development centers around the country, in the regions, in the district, mm -hmm. employ these coaches, you know, that's a, or increase the number of these coaches in the ministry, you know, so that they go man them centers there, players go, they get contact hours with them, and in the process, development will start. Yeah, excuse me, please. You, 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 you know, have the platform, Let me sir. go back to this transition, you know. If we've not got it right, we've not got the transition right from the coaches, as John said. Today, I've always been saying this. We thank God. I want, I, I, I'm, I'm always thanking the FA, the president of the FA, the technical department, and this young man sitting here. So the coaches have price tag because they made those causes. Now coaches have license. Coaches have price tags today, you know? And, uh, and yeah, you but, guys are separated. Ah, yes. they were analyzing it. Ah, they were analyzing it. But yes, before now, see? You see, yeah, but, but if they, the transition wasn't there before we came in as coaches. Now, these categories, these categories, there has to be graduation every one or two years. You have to graduate from under 15 to 16, from 16 to 17. 
And if those experienced coaches who are supposed to be there are not there to develop those um, grassroots, to develop them, how is, how, how is there going to be any gradation? When we went to Guinea, I saw four boys in the Senegal team who we are playing for the under-17 when we went to Senegal. They graduated from this under-17 to the under-20. Four players. That's what we call development. You yeah. see? Go going back to what Zappa just mentioned, you know, I, I, just, I just thought, you know, when, when I came into Sierra Leone for just meant there, we know to grow, we have to develop as coaches because the coaching is the, is the, biggest, is the biggest player around the development process, okay? Going back to what you just mentioned, Bawo, going back to the ball clubhouse, in terms of environment, in terms of where we start, when you just mentioned about we don't have academies, this could be a starting point. Where? In the southern region, they can start identifying, they can start identifying better, better, good, young potential on the 15, on the 16, on the 17 boys that could go into the hostels and develop them. That is a process in itself. You could have that one now in the southern region. You could have the same in the north. You can have the same in the east and then the western area. Okay? Whilst you're doing your league situation that's going to be going on, again, when I came back from Morocco on the course, I think the, the general section has got, very, is, 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 is got good ideas about which way the development process has to go. I think we've sat down, we've really, it's because of Corona, but we were going to embark on that. Because that's the way forward now. Even with the, with the FIFA is an older in the world now, uh, uh, Bao, it's about players' ID on the 17s. On the 15s, on the 17s, nationals. That's the primary focus now in terms of development. Okay? So I think we're going to look at that in Sierra Leone, and that's, where, that's what's going to be our starting point. Wherein the process we start, yes, the school league will be there, but that will be for IDs, play IDs, identify bring in we have to start thinking about how we get clubs to manage on the 15s 16s and 17s we have to okay i know people say oh the clubs have to have that it doesn't necessarily have to be the clubs anymore let's take it away from the clubs let's look at for example we're going to the northern region we want 20 on the 15 teams that are going to be very, very strong in terms of the age situation. Okay. 20 in the northern region. We look at 20 on the 16 teams and 20 on the 17 teams. And we have a whole competition running. This on the 15s will have all week to play, train, and then they will play the games on Saturday in the morning. Sunday morning, and then you have the on the 17s which will play. Probably Monday, when the Premier League is not playing. They'll play Mondays. So you have a whole competition that's going for on the 15s, on the 16s, on the 17s running for the next six to seven months. Okay? That's an example. During those periods, we'll have technical teams attached or scouts attached to the on the 15, uh, 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 and what is it, league, wherein they will start identifying players to go into the elite, which they will do for those players in the, in, the, in, the, in the week. They'll get them three times a week. Identify probably, so you get 40 players from that under 15 league. Bring them now and start working with them on under 15. Elite. Okay? Same for the 16s, same for the 17s. So we have that running in the north, in the south, in the east, and the western area. At the end of it all is we want to get the best under 15 boys in the whole country, wherein the south will divide their own, the north, the east will sit down and look at the best potential 30 or 40 players that will form part of the under 15 national. Okay? Same for the under 16, same for the under 17. So there's no gray areas anymore. So you guys in the north have to look after your own and identify you in the south, the east, and the western area. And then we all come together. So it stops all this thing about, oh, why players are not coming from the north, they're not coming from the south, they're not. Now everyone does their own jobs. So if we can do all that and we don't have the best players in the country, then we failed again. But if we can do that and then we get it right, where we will know, yes, we've got the best players in the whole country, we've done the work. And in terms of on the 15 nationals, we have a good group on the 15, on the 16, on the 17. And that's going to be the way forward for us. Once we have that, and then we've got them into, for example, 
what Mabadi has done above. For the rest, southern region, we say the best on the 15, on the 16 group of boys, what happens? In a month, we have a week on the 15s. Going to the, um, um, what is it called? The book clubhouse. Going to the book clubhouse. We have them for a week. After that, they go back to school. After that, we get you on the 16s in. We keep doing that every month, every month. But don't forget, what you're getting done is development. Okay? Those players are still playing, but they're still developing and going through the proper, proper situation of development. So we can have that in the north, the south, the east, and the west. And it's been monitored. So nobody can complain, say, well, this and this and that. So now we have that. If that doesn't work in Gibbao, then what is going to work? I think it, it, it will yeah, surely it work. work. Because if we go through those processes, right, and um, we may not win a competition because maybe we'll be competing with teams that have started it long before us, but we will surely get it right. Get it right. And what we'll have as well is, is a transition of players. Yes. yes. So we'll have players transitioning. Yes. So that means now we're going to start having a pool of players again in the country that will give us the quality to start competing. Because one of the biggest problems we have now, Bawo, we have lost players. We don't have players, Sierra Leone. Yeah, and at this, and at this go, go bring me to the concluding part of this program, this episode and the program eventually as we close. We are playing to qualify for the Nations Cup. I think some four years ago came very close with you in Ivory Coast. And uh, this has been a process we did we bring together some set of players, train, you know, without having any program in place in the first place, asking, ah, we're going to go play competition. Mm -hmm. You just kept playing together because you, 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 you felt duty bound to do so. Yeah? yeah. So keeping this in mind, and of course, in relation to what things up, I also mentioned as to target putting coaches in place and say, let's work this program and see that by this time we should be ready for this. What do, for me, we are playing the nations, for a Nations Cup now, we it gets to be difficult for all qualify. But yet, I don't know, you have, you have people with the belief that we get for qualify and for qualify without not even thinking of what they are stake. How do we go about it? Um, again, unless we, you know, sometimes we have to be very, have to be very upfront and be very honest. Sure. You know, um, you'll know when you're ready. You'll know when you're going to start achieving. You know that. I think, for us, we're going there. We're going to give you a shot. Well, it's not about qualification anymore. It's about transition now. We've got to start transi transitioning the younger players. We've got to start looking at what it is. We've got to start throwing these younger players in to see the temperament around the levels of football we're going into. And then we start thinking about the next Nations Cup. Mm -hmm. For me, I have the biggest project I have for student football is in the next five years, we qualify for one major championship. That will be success for us. It doesn't necessarily mean the senior national team. It could be on the 20, on the 23, on the 17s. But we qualify for one tournament. I think that would be the transition for us in terms of our football. But for now, let's think about transitioning. You know, people are sitting there thinking, oh, we're going to go qualify, we're going to go and qualify. Um, let's, be, let's be honest. You're not, you're not looking around and saying, we're not good enough in terms of our players. But football is about levels. I've always said that. Sure. Football is about levels. You know, everyone is saying, we've got players, we've got players. The lads that have gone out, the last national team, they've done very, very well. I think that's the most talented group of players we've had. Not being very lucky at all, but they've done their bit, they've done very well. Now they're going, the transition is coming, we're bringing new players in. The new players they are bringing in, what do we have outside? What do we have inside? Again, the, 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 the problem we have is, is a lot of people in the city, this, I think this is where I think Australian football has got the biggest problem. You see these managers in football, so managers that sit on the corner, corner, where you call them, oh, this players have been play, oh, this players have been play. But oh, that's the problem, eh? It's put these players in a, in a pedestal where they feel like, they're already world beaters when they know. Because they've got people around them that are not telling them, say no. Exactly. And that's not very good at all. Okay? Everyone is saying, they're watching the Premier League. You've watched the Premier League. And we're thinking, okay, this is we're talking Australian Premier League. The boys that are coming through have done very, very well. But they need to go through a process of development. They need to know the game. They need to learn the game. They need to know their roles and responsibilities. Before we can go to the next level. But because we don't have academies, because they haven't gone through the normal procedures where it should be enclosed, where the development process is, everyone knows, the centre back knows, when the ball is on the left hand side there, what do I what do I do? When do I max space? When do I drop off? When do I go tight? When don't I go tight? When do I nullify space? All these are things. If you look at the top level professionals like you 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 know as well, Bao. You see players playing, you see, oh, you think 
They're gonna, he's gonna get tight. They're gonna play into the area. They're gonna run him. They're gonna score. No. What do you do? Do you go tight into areas, or do you follow the centre forward into the midfield, or do you pass him on? Yeah. And the players come to the Premier League. Yes, the and the, time, no? exactly. And the players know that from when they're 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 playing. So when they're going now, they're not ready. Coaches don't need to go and tell them again when to get tight, when to get tight. But at this level for our football, we still need to learn these boys. When do I get tight? About decision making. So at this age, at this level, they're playing in the Premier League. Again, with the coaching. If they don't get it in the clubs, where the coaching is right, what happens in the national team? I have to start all over again. I have to start getting them to understand when do you pass 50 yards, how do you drill a ball, what is a, 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 a long passing, what is about decision making, what is about how do we mark areas, when do we have to start all over again. So this is the time we need because we don't have academies, it doesn't work in the football club. This is the time we need to develop these players. Even when the league is going on, we have to have a national team that's working. Okay, we have to have a model for Australian football. Power. All that we don't have. You go to uh, Edwards, they're playing 4 4 2. You go to Lions, I change my system every time. You go to Diamond Stars, they're playing different situations. You go to this, the players are all getting confused. When you bring them to the national team, only what they know in the club is the way they're going to work. But that's not the way you work because you're working in different situations. Yeah. I'm bringing you because I feel we're better in a 4 3 3. Well, you don't know about a 4 4 3 3. You've been doing a 4 4 2 for the last five, six years. So, how do you come into the national team into a 4 3 3? But if we identify it, Sierra Leone football and say, okay, now we've done the 14s, we've done the 15s, the 16s, 17s. Now, we've all come together. These are the coaches. These are the uh, elite coaches that are going to work. This is what we're going to work. What we have in Sierra Leone football is our players and what we think suits us in Sierra Leone football is a 4 3 3. So, everyone that's working around on the 15s has to work on the 4 3 3. And we've got to work on the 4 3 3 with different, different variations around the coaches. Okay. So we'll have that on the four, we'll, have, we'll have that, we'll have a plan B. And then if the players are graduating from under 17 to under 20, they know they're going into a 4 3 3. They know exactly what they're doing. Well, how can you be working in a 4 2 3 1? You're working in a 4 3 3. When they're going there, what happens? Confusion. So this is the whole structure so we need let's, to put let's together. Conclude, Zappa, on this. It's going to be a party shot. Yeah, I think uh, he has said it all because um, we need to have a model. As he rightly said, we need to have a model, and it has to be uh, on. We are we we are supposed to be on the same side, on the same side. Because when the player is coming from the under 15, going to the 16, you know exactly what you're going to do there. When you're coming from the under 16, going to the 17, you know exactly what you're going to do there. You know. But if we don't get it right at the club level, and we are not getting it right at the club level because we don't have academies, you see. Because if you don't get it right at that younger age. It is very, very difficult to get it right at the club level. Yeah, yeah. So we really need to go back and create this environment for academies so where the players will start getting it right at an early age. So when they come to club level, they know exactly what they are doing. So yeah. and it will be very, very sure. easy for them going to the various this national a, teams. This is a discussion we will keep going for sure. We promise you last week that this week we will bring you these two brains for sure that we will discuss the country's football. And of course, I'm sure the discussion will be very more detailed as far as taking the country's game forward is concerned. We'll try again for see how we bring the administrators in for see exactly as far as that aspect from government point of view and that of the FA point of view is concerned, how the collaboration will work for sure that will keep the country game forward. And I always forget for you in this episode of Oran Football Special, supported by sponsored by Oran and supported by Priority Solution and part of Priority Solution as well. It has been a huge, huge moment here with me. And of course, sitting in between two legends. It shows where how well I don't wash my hand for ensure that mm -hmm. I eat with kids. <laughs> and that is why as a Liverpool supporter, I'm congratulating all Liverpool supporters around the globe and higher learning in particular, including you know my producer, more like Cabo M Su Owen, you know. But, uh, he has been around for a while. So the name Owen, he has been around for a while. <laughs> of course, on behalf of my team, Agogo, you know, the Creole striker, Richie Bonner, Christian, I want to say, I'm signing out with a bang. And of course, this program will continue for bringing to you details as far as football is concerned. Keep watching as always. Orange.